There are some things about serotonin that the mainstream media doesn't want to tell you. It is my job to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is take a look at some of the symptoms associated with high serotonin. So first of all, let's take a look at what is serotonin. And I'm sure many of you probably already know what it means, but basically serotonin is a neurotransmitter and a neuromodulator. And many people associate serotonin with a happy mood, feelings of content, and also some people may know a little bit about the effects on our gut health. So what we need to do is understand basically where serotonin is I guess derived from. So if we have a look at this diagram, we can see that tryptophan, which is an essential amino acid, which we find in you know chicken, turkey, meat, some nuts and things like that. So tryptophan can basically get converted into serotonin via two main enzymes. We have tryptophan hydroxylase one and tryptophan hydroxylase two. Tryptophan hydroxylase 1 is mostly found peripherally. So we're looking outside of the CNS, whereas tryptophan hydroxylase 2 is mostly found within the brain. So what we know about serotonin in the brain is that it can modulate depression. It can impact our sleep-wake cycle. It can affect aggression, food intake, psychosis, anxiety, and other things. And then peripherally, serotonin can massively affect our vascular tone. It's actually vasoconstrictive, which means decreases blood flow. It can affect hemostasis. It can affect cell regeneration. It can modulate our heart pumping functions. It can affect organ development, intestinal motility, immunomodulation, and others. High serotonin symptom number one is anhedonia. Now, anhedonia you may have heard me talk about before, which is essentially a loss of ability to experience pleasure or joy from activities that should feel good in general. It's a well-known phenomenon that occurs in depression and major depressive disorder. And it can almost be described as a flatlining effect. In fact, a well-known researcher describes anhedonia as a symptom complex that actually occurs in many mental diseases and different psychoneuroses. And he describes anhedonia as a kind of organic anesthesia, a dropping out from consciousness of desire and satisfaction. So this is really interesting because many people think that by increasing serotonin, we're going to feel happier when really serotonin went too high in the brain or when we have excess serotonin, it can actually lead to anhedonia, which is a numbing of our pleasure response. For example, the classic one is post SSRI sexual dysfunction, which is even after withdrawing from SSRI drugs, they can lead to semi-permanent numbing of the genitals, which means a numbing of orgasm and blunted sexual pleasure, which is something that, again, is a troubling symptom for millions of people. So I guess with this high serotonin, let's take a look at how it can lead to anhedonia. I'll read a snippet from this particular study. So scientists came to their conclusions after tracking the brain activity of laboratory rats placed in testing social situations. The experiment allowed the researchers to monitor the rats' reaction to stress over a 21 day period and their resilience to anhedonia. So susceptibility to anhedonia varies from person to person and previous research looking at animals and depressed patients that have committed suicide suggests that this relates to an impaired functioning of the brain reward system. According to a paper published in the Journal of Neuroscience, rats that are susceptible to stress-induced anhedonia displayed elevated numbers of serotonin signaling neurons caused by the recruitment of non-serotonin signaling neurons in the central section of the dorsal RAF nucleus, an area of the brain associated with regulating stress. What we can see here is that elevated levels of serotonin or high amounts of serotonin producing neurons increases one's susceptibility to stress-induced anhedonia. Basically, there are many models to actually create anhedonia, which is Obviously, it's a terrible state to be in, but if we have a look at you know the everyday person, 
chronic stress is known to cause disease and chronic stress is also known to worsen anhedonia. So we can see here that susceptibility to chronic stress can be, I guess, worsened by having too much serotonin. So this is really, really fascinating research. So the other way that serotonin can sort of blunt pleasure and reward is that serotonin can blunt dopamine activity. So the anhedonia related to high serotonin is possibly caused by serotonin's effects on the frontal lobes and or serotonergic modulation of midbrain dopaminergic systems projecting to the prefrontal cortex. With elevated serotonergic transmission, this can activate GABA interneurons, thereby dampening the noradrenergic and dopaminergic activity. So basically what serotonin can do when in high amounts or in excess amounts, it can actually dampen the benefits of having high dopamine or high noradrenaline. We're gonna see a blunting of that response in the body, which is, again, not something that we want. We wanna be feeling the benefits of having high dopamine, high norepinephrine. We wanna feel excited and thrilled, ready to take on challenges. Instead, what serotonin can do is dampen that response. The next symptom of high serotonin is actually fatigue. Now, I wanna quickly explain to you what is the central cause of fatigue in the brain when we exercise. So actually during exercise is actually a buildup of serotonin, which can lead to fatigue in the brain. Now, interestingly, the tiredness or lethargy, which is obviously a common symptom in chronic fatigue syndrome is actually due to elevated 5-HT2A receptor count. However, inhibiting tryptophan hydroxylase actually prevents this fatigue. And this is one of the reasons why Siberian ginseng, beta alanine, and other agents that lower serotonin like bromantane can reduce fatigue by shifting the balance towards more of a dopamine dominant state. And that's one of the key advantages of these compounds. In addition, we know that serotonin can also lower the metabolic rate by inhibiting thyroid function. Again, there's many studies that link high serotonin with obesity. Um, and again, that's gonna affect fatigue and things like that. So this particular study was titled Inhibition of Tryptophan Hydroxylase Abolishes Fatigue Induced by Central Tryptophan in Exercising Rats. So the next high serotonin symptom is actually rigid thinking. Now, when it comes to rigid thinking, what I'm referring to here is, I guess, feeling very stiff in a conversation with someone, or you just feel like your thoughts and the way that you view things is very, I guess, robotic or in a straight line. You're very straight line thinking. Whereas those that have expansive thinking and they can sort of have that creative train of thought, they generally won't have high serotonin. So this rigid thinking and mental inflexibility can be a symptom of high serotonin. And some studies actually say that activation of the 5-HT2A receptor through the use of say psychedelics such as LSD or mushrooms reduce rigid thinking. But this is actually because it stimulates glutamate release which then stimulates dopamine release via the NMDA receptor. And dopamine is ultimately involved in creativity and flexible thinking. And plus the other fact here is that after psychedelics exposure, people usually feel a kind of bliss for a week or two afterwards. And this is most likely due to a down regulation of the 5-HT2A serotonin receptor. So we can see in this study it was titled, Evidence for the preferential involvement of 5-HT2A serotonin receptors in stress and drug-induced dopamine release in the rat medial prefrontal cortex. So we can see that this particular 5-HT2A receptor can mediate and influence dopamine release. The fourth symptom of high serotonin is actually laziness. Now picture serotonin as somebody, I guess, who procrastinates a lot. Somebody who has very high serotonin generally feels too comfortable and cozy all the time. They just feel, I guess, like they'd rather be on their couch watching TV or watching movies all day. Someone with high serotonin would actually struggle to initiate tasks. So they're someone who will tend to like overthink and procrastinate. Whereas again, if someone with high dopamine does not procrastinate, they actually don't dwell on tasks that they need to do. They take action. They take action towards their goals. The fifth symptom of high serotonin is the robotic nature. So one thing you need to understand is that SSRIs or serotonin promoting drugs can make humans obedient. 
They reduce lateral thinking and make it easier to surrender to the norm. High serotonin makes one more compliant and agreeable. This is evident. We see this in many rat studies. We see this with people, how they respond to serotonin releasing drugs. And whereas dopamine, on the other hand, promotes that expansive thinking and again, enables you to take action. Generally, those that have high serotonin and low dopamine, they tend to come across as quite robotic. Their voice is pretty monotone. <laughs> Like they're very just blah, 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 flatlined. Hopefully you guys learned something new in this video. Please do check out all of the resources down below. I have in the video description, I have some really cool health resources and offers there if you want to check them out. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope to see you in the next video.